We just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to do a first half grading of season three of Arrow. Now, the first half of Arrow season three was a bit slow. And believe me, that's not a knock. After season two, after the way it ended, things had to kind of slow down a bit. The death of Sarah served as the focal point of the first half of Arrow season three. And it's very sad. I mean, she had just reunited with her family. Even though she was back and forth between the league and Starling City, she was alive. And that was the important part. There was always going to be an opportunity for Sarah to see her father, her sister, and her mother, as well as Oliver. And now that she's gone, the focus is finding who her killer was. And while all things pointed to Malcolm Merlin as the person who killed Sarah, Oliver decided to take a chance and believe that Malcolm didn't do the killing, much to the dismay of Nissa Al Ghul. And in between this hunt for Sarah's killer, many other events were taking place. For example, Laurel slowly and gradually becoming a vigilante herself, even in one episode donning a mask. And another big event that happened was Thea returning to Starling City, being convinced by Oliver to come back. In episode 3, Corto Mortis, we saw Oliver go and make an attempt to get Thea and bring her home, which he succeeded, but immediately he started to notice differences in Thea. For example, when the hot coffee spilled on her hand and she had no reaction. And we all knew at that point that Malcolm Merlin had already gotten to her, not only mentally, but had already given her training on how to protect herself. So things may seem a little slow in the outset, but to me that's a good thing because a lot of the things they're setting up are emotionally based and that goes back to the season one and how things were really getting emotional towards the end of season one season two i kind of saw as more of an action-packed season which was great and it had its shares of emotions but i felt that season one had some stronger emotional pull now the only episode that really didn't do it for me was cupid and while it was pretty fun at times it felt more like filler and it just really didn't do it for me. It really didn't have a big payoff for me. So that's the one episode out of the first nine that I really wasn't too crazy about. And while I like Brandon Roth and I like the fact that he's going to be a superhero in his own right, I kind of felt that his story arc was so, so opposite from what was going on. And sometimes that can be a good thing if it's done well. But when you consider how dark and gloomy things are going on in Starling City right now with the death of Sarah and other things happening... When he kind of got on screen and he's kind of dorky and making like these little corny jokes, it just kind of felt out of place at times. And even though he wasn't always around Oliver, which to me was another weird thing. I mean, they had their boardroom encounter, so to speak, where they're both pitching for Queen Consolidated. Outside of that, they didn't really have too many interactions. Felicity was more like a link between the two characters. And even then, they really didn't, she really didn't talk about them that much. So, so I, I thought it was, I thought it was okay, but it just seemed weird at times. When you see him being like that, and then you go to another scene, and everything's dark and gloomy, and we got to find Sarah's killer. So that's another part for me that I think is a good thing, but maybe it could have been done a little bit differently. I don't know. That's just how I feel. Outside of that, the first half of season three, I would describe as a very quiet and silent build towards a big payoff, or at least I expect a big payoff in the second half of season three. It almost seemed like a quiet doom, tensions building in the air, things are just dark. It's almost, you know, there's no, not too much action, but there's a sense of urgency, finding Sarah's killer, things being set up for a big, big second half, I think. And when you consider Ra's al Ghul's in the picture, Nyssa obviously is a very formidable opponent in and of herself, and this is an army of assassins, not just one or two characters. And then you consider Thea and what she's involved in. And how's it going to be when Thea, if Thea, finds out that Malcolm Merlin really is just using her? He doesn't really care for her. That was evident last night, in my opinion, when we found out that she, he drugged her. Obviously, I found out <laughs> later. But the point being is that he's telling her he cares for her, he loves her, and he wants to protect her. But at the same time, he's using her as leverage to try and get his ass out of the League of Shadows. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if Thea ever finds out that Malcolm was the one that drugged her. And wouldn't it be even more interesting if she ends up being the one to kill him? And what kind of rehabilitation is Oliver going to go through when you consider that he got stabbed in the chest, he got hit in the throat, and he fell off a mountain? I know everybody's talking about Lazarus Pits, and okay, that's all fine and well. I've never read the comics, so I've never heard of them. Everything I know about Ra's al Ghul is based on movies or TVs. So obviously, he's going to get healed but then what is the end game is he ever going to get back to have an opportunity to fight Ra's al Ghul and eventually kill him I don't know he looked pretty outclassed in that match but the good thing is that I guess the rules of the league is that you pay your debt technically he kind of paid his so he should be out of Ra's al Ghul's crosshairs but the question is will he do something else to piss off Ra's or will Ra's just go after him because Nissa is going to be pissed off that he's still alive after killing her lover allegedly we'll find out all about these events in the second half of Arrow season three but in terms of the first half I'm going to give it a B plus 
outside of Brandon Roth and some of his corny moments and the Cupid episode, which I really wasn't too crazy about, everything else was fine. When I say that the show started off a little slow, I didn't really mean that as a bad thing. It, it, it was almost like a very slow build with tension, with darkness, with gloom, uh, some despair. You know, when you think about what could happen to um, Captain Lance, if he ever found out that Sarah was dead, you would just feel so bad for this guy. So it's going to be interesting to see how events play out in the second half of season three. And I'm looking forward to it. And you can expect my reviews going forward. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news. We just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Join the nation's Facebook page to meet other subscribers or visit ETN's Facebook page and Twitter page. Links for all are in the description. You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to do a first half grading of season three of Arrow. Now the first half of Arrow season three was a bit slow. And believe me, that's not a knock. After season two, after the way it ended, things had to kind of slow down a bit. The death of Sarah served as the focal point of the first half of Arrow season three. And it's very sad. I mean, she had just reunited with her family. Even though she was back and forth between the league and Starling City, she was alive, and that was the important part. There was always going to be an opportunity for Sarah to see her father, her sister, and her mother, as well as Oliver. And now that she's gone, the focus is finding 